Hey guys, how you doing? Just gonna move this window over here. Why can I not see the whole window? There we go. Lucid, Cristiano, Dennis, Bop, Boop. Den, how you doing? Fee, Nicolaj. I cannot even say your username, but hello from sunny Sweden, hi. Stelios, how you doing? <laughs> Have you seen the FM3 yet, Cody? Yes, I have indeed. Uh, it looks super cool. Uh, I'm slightly chopped off here because my camera, I can't get it far enough away in this new room that I've got. So apologies for that. The FM3 looks amazing, absolutely amazing. I've, I'm on the, well, I'm not on the waiting list, but um, the guys know that I want one. So at some point when it's all good, the craziness has died down, I'll definitely get one. But I'm just checking this out at the moment. XFX3, clipping sound levels, really? <laughs> Shouldn't be. Ah, uh, maybe maybe one or two. Let me just turn turn this down. I'm doing this balancing act because um, the way I've got this set up, I've got this new capture card, uh, and the way it's set up, I'm running the uh, audio in analog to the capture card, and then slightly delaying the audio. So hopefully it's in sync. But to try and get the levels right is really really difficult. Really really difficult uh, for some reason. Don't know why. Um, I am checking it. Fingers crossed. Let me know if this sounds good, guys. <laughs> You've got some lapel mic mixed in as well. I have seen the Moore G300. Um, now then, I've not tried it. I've tried the preamp live, which I liked. I thought that was pretty cool, but I've not tried the, um, the G300. I've heard good things about it though. Ah, it's the mic that's too loud. Okay, so hold on a second. Bear with me. Okay, how's that? Let me know if that's any better. Quick legato tip, please. Play slowly, play very, very slowly. Thank you very much, Romans. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? What's my opinion of Rickenbacker guitars? They're great. They're really good for a very particular thing. I think they're absolutely awesome. If you want that jangly kind of strumming sound or kind of nice picked arpeggios, especially the 12 strings, they're absolutely awesome. Um, okay, guitar sounds wonderful. Good. Uh, guitar, oh more. man, people are giving me different information. Quite roomy and gainy. Yeah, it is going to be roomy because the only way I can get my vocals and guitar in is to use the lapel mic. So you're hearing the direct guitar and the lapel. <laughs> I will probably find a better way of doing it soon, but uh, for now, this is what we've got, so apologies for that. Um, yeah, Quentin, it is both, it's not a room mic, it's, it's this mic plus the, the DI'd Axe FX3. Uh, if I turn the, the mic off, you'd just be hearing the Axe FX3. So if I, um, if I just do this, if I just turn the phantom power off, bear with me, I'll come back in a minute. Let me check this out. Maybe you can hear guitar better now. Is that better? Let me know if that's better, guys. I can't hear it. I can only hear what's in the room. <laughs> should be a little bit better now, I think. We'll see. 
Uh, I've tried the line out on my JVM 419H and the cab sim just doesn't cut it for recording anything else other than demos. I have never played the line out cab sim on any amplifier that I would ever use for anything other than just like you say doing demos or just uh, haha cool um, or, or for just very basic recording or demoing the amp itself. Uh, generally what I like to do if you if you're going to use the line out either switch the cab sim off and use a third party IR or the other thing you could do which I used to do back in the day is I would run out the effects send which is the preamp stage of your amplifier and then these days if you download two notes two note the two notch engineering if you download their um, wall of sound 3 plugin that does all your cabinet simulation and your power amp simulation as well so you can check that out that will uh, really give you a good sound if you use the preamp out of your amplifier because you get all if you, especially if you use a lot of preamp gain so like this kind of a sound I'm using a Friedman preamp uh, sorry a Friedman model on the XFX3 a lot of the Friedman sound is very preampy I'm not really I've not got the master volume running particularly high so this sound <laughs> is very much based on the preamp gain so if you run out the preamp so you run out the effect send if you then model the power amp and you model the speaker and mic combination it sounds amazing if you check out some of my early videos they used to be that way um, let's make a patch where we use 100% of the CPU I will actually do I haven't got that much time to live stream tonight I just want to check it all works but um, we will I'll try and do a stream where we like I should I should really hook up with Leon Todd I really, if you've not checked out Leon's stuff, check out Leon. He does some amazing videos. I would love to see him uh, max out the CPU of the uh, XFX3. I've, I've maximum got to 50% so far, but I haven't done anything too crazy. I've only done sort of single and double uh, patches in terms of signal paths. Um, you test the new Fractal FM3? Yes, I have. Hi there, Rocky, by the way. Um, different from the Fractal X3. Sorry, I haven't tested it. I've not even seen one in real life. I've just seen them uh, either on video uh, from the Axe Fest. Uh, I've not seen one in the wild, as it were. I would love to. I'm definitely going to get one because my AX8 sounds amazing. It is amazing, but unfortunately, it suffered quite a bit of damage as it's been travelled on various different tours, and the handle, the metal handle, has come off. So I really don't want to travel with it anymore because I don't want it to get damaged any further. So I want an FM3 because it's smaller as well, I believe. Um, so, blimey, there's a lot of chat going on. Um, I'm going to miss loads of this. It was good to meet you at Namton. It was good to meet you too, dude. Very, very nice to meet you too. Uh, Mr. Beebs, how are you doing? Um, thank you very much, David Torres. Uh, let's see. Have you found worth buying the Axe FX3 over the Axe FX2, Marco? Um, it totally depends, really, what you need. If you need the extra flexibility from the ins and outs, 100% yes, because it will replace your existing audio interface if you don't need phantom powered mics. You could actually buy an external phantom powered preamp to plug into one of the ins as well. Um, if you need the extra CPU power, 100% definitely, and some of the models are a big step up in terms of the feel and the way they react. Um, some of the, the higher gain amps, like um, the Marshall Plexis, uh, sound absolutely amazing now. They were great before. I've still got the XFX2 down here. Um, so yeah, this isn't 100% officially my unit, by the way, guys. This is a loaner that was a review unit that I'm keeping for the time being. If I keep my fingers crossed, it might let me keep it for quite a while. We will see. But it's, it's absolutely staggeringly good. Um, as far as upgrading from the two, that's really a decision you need to make by checking out the feature set. What I would say is this absolutely is amazing, but doesn't make the XFX2 redundant by any stretch of the imagination. The XFX2 is still amazing, and it always was incredible. The original Ultra is still an amazing device, especially if you need something on a budget. Um, but this is fabulous. The, the screen is great. The interface is great in terms of how you operate things. Obviously, you can use Axe Edit 3 as well, but this interface is superb. Um, down to things like having um, the metering, for instance. You guys won't be able to see this because this is going to be out of focus. In fact, when I turn around, it's quite likely the camera is just focusing on... It's got this really nice autofocus feature, so it's going to focus on whatever I put in front of it, or it should do anyway. I've got quite a cheap lens on it. I'm using a Sony a7 III, which is an awesome camera, by the way. But like the metering that you've got. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe you guys can see the metering going there. I'm not sure. Um, it's fabulous. Absolutely brilliant. Really, really nice thing. I love it. Um, can you open it up and tighten the screws? Tom? I think I'm missing what, what you guys are talking about there. Uh, it's a common problem. Oh, interesting. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I must have missed something. Uh, let me see if I can scroll up on the chat because uh, I think I can. YouTube has um, altered the way the live streams work. Uh, wow, I'm missing so much here. Um, what would be your advice for guys that are starting with jazz? This is turning into a QA, and a which I guess it always go, was going to. Um, immerse yourself in it, I guess, so that you, and like any other musical style, I mean, I don't play a lot of jazz these days. Uh, in fact, the only person I ever play jazz with is David Beebe, uh, who is somewhere in the chat. Um, but immerse yourself in the style because you need to know quite deeply ingrained within yourself what it's supposed to sound like before you've got an idea of how it's supposed to sound like on the guitar when you play. So listen to all of the great players. I don't need to list, well, I can list a few. Wes Montgomery, Jim Hall, Pat Metheny, Kurt Rosenwinkel, uh, you know, just you can list John Schofield, list, list as many guitar players as you want, George Benson, all the new guys as well, listen to all those guys and really immerse yourself in that sound and then immerse yourself in the sax players and the piano players, Keith Jarrett, Bill Evans, um, Oscar Peterson, um, you know, Michael Brecker, Chris Potter, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, all that stuff. Listen, 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 listen and so that you get this deep-seated internalised vision or it's not vision, is it? Um, auditory ability to understand how that style is supposed to sound. That would be my biggest advice. It's not, not necessarily a guitar-related thing, but just so that you know how it's supposed to sound. Um, right, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm glad you're, uh, you're, you think it's cool to see a live stream. I'm going to try and do a few more of these. We'll see. Hi, Tom. Any suggestions on how to play with the volume and tone knobs to kind of change the nature, mood, sound, and feel? Yeah, I mean, first of all, get some decent quality uh, volume and tone knobs because you don't want the ones that um, don't have a nice taper on them so that when you turn up a little bit, they're basically on full. Um, I saw uh, Mark Agnesi, who's in trouble at the moment for various reasons, or for one specific reason with Gibson. You probably know about that video. I'm not going to talk about it on stream. Um, he was talking about the, the Gibson have gone back to these tapered pots that basically, uh, when they're on 10, it sounds like 10. When they're on seven, it sounds like seven. When they're on four, it sounds like four. Um, and that's what you want. And then get used to um, where you need to set your volume to get certain sounds. So with this Friedman sound I've got at the moment, as opposed to just using your pickup selection switch, and I've got nine different pickup selections I can do with this guitar, so there's a lot going on, but not just that. This sound. <laughs> If I go to my neck pickup and then roll my volume up just a little bit, I have new strings on, sorry guys. I literally changed my strings about 40 minutes ago. So that same sound. I should just use the tuner on the XFX, I don't know why I'm not can do this too if you know where to set the volume. Now the cool thing is if you have a good um, volume pot in your guitar that tapers nicely, this is on, so if I, if I sort of direct as, as to where the, the, uh, the number that points at the pickup, I'm on three at the moment. So here's 10, here's three, What you'll notice with the good volume pot is that the level didn't actually go down in terms of volume specifically, it's the, it's the, the amount of signal that's getting through to the amp, and we've not lost any high end at all. That's what a good volume pot should do. Now that means that now I've got a ton of dynamic range, because... So if I dig in hard, it's got that kind of Greg Howe... That kind of Greg Howe crunchy vibe. Or like almost um, like a modern Hendrixy kind of thing. I love it. It's awesome. So just learning what you can do with the volume uh, control is really really important. I'd never ever ever use the tone control. Very rarely. The only time I would ever use it is. Um, 
If I was playing through a particularly bright amp and I wanted a jazz sound, I might use it to just roll off some of the high end, but very rarely do I use the tone control. God, I'm taking forever to answer these questions. Um, sounds like Petrucci's Images and Words era. That's kind of cool. I like that. I think, don't think it's quite enough gain, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, this tuning means that that solo is pretty much impossible to play because I'm not in standard tuning. Uh, but anyway, it's all good fun. Uh, let's see. Sorry guys, I'm missing so much stuff. RG1070, play it for a bit. This is not an RG1070. This is an S. This is an awesome guitar. This is... Pretty new to me. I went down to went down to Headstock, which is where Laney amps are made, and Ibanez guitars are distributed in the UK. I love those guys so much. Some of you guys will know Lee Wraith, awesome player. Just released a really great album as well. Lee is marketing director for um, Headstock and Laney, and I went down there a few weeks ago and uh, came back with this. I fell in love with it, and it's an, an old stock guitar. It's from 2018, and it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I think it's got um, Tone Zone and Air Norton, um, possibly a True Velvet. I can't remember. You guys can check the specs out on the Ibanez website. I didn't have a guitar with two humbuckers and a single coil, so I fell in love with it. And this this reminds me of um, if any of you guys have been following me for a while. When I first started doing YouTube back in the day, I had an Ibanez um, S two o seven five FW which was very similar to this, it had a bu um, Bubinga top. This is actually, it, I don't know if this is Bubinga or whether it's spalted maple, but um, it's a big thick top on this guitar. I don't know if you guys can see that, I don't know if the camera will focus on it properly, but it's a big thick piece of wood. Very, very cool indeed. And um, this reminded me of that guitar and those guitars, the 2075FWs, they were made in Korea, I think, but they were a prestige guitar. Were they made in Korea? They, were, they weren't made in Japan. And they caused some controversy at the time. But they were amazing guitars. They had this cool little inlay at the 12th fret. And now if you try and buy them, you can only seem to get them from Japan. And they cost the earth, the absolute earth. They're really, really expensive. So this was the nearest I could get. And it sounds great. So um, I'll do the different pickup positions. It's a pretty simple guitar, just a five-way switch. So you've got... So it sounds great, I love it. And then the, the neck pickup uh, is a humbucker. You, I don't actually know, I've never looked into it, what the switching's doing, but I don't think you can split the neck position on its own. Some of you guys might know, but there's nothing to push or pull on here. neck is beautiful. I think it's um, it's Purple Heart Venge, I think. I think. Um, and then Maple and possibly Rosewood strips on there. Uh, it looks like Rosewood, but it might be something else, given that Rosewood is a little bit of a controversial wood. But it's a gorgeous guitar. I absolutely love it. And the... Uh, sorry about pulling out of the lead there, guys. Uh, I don't actually know how to mute the Axe FX yet. The Axe FX 3. Still playing with it. Um, and the neck on it is a little bit fatter than you'd find with, a, with an RG, which is kind of nice because that's what I like. So what else have we got here, guys? Um, I can hang around for another 15 minutes or so. Okay. Oops. Okay, wowzers. Sorry, guys, I've missed so much chat. It's ridiculous. Um, where were we? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Can you please compare the tone and ease of use between the Boss Tube Expander and Universal Audio Top Box? I can, I can't do it now um, because this, I have um, an audience uh, ASP 800 down here and I've maxed all the inputs on it with various different pieces of gear because I'm a bit of a gear whore. So I have, I've got the Ox, the uh, Tube Amp Expander uh, and I also have the two notes down here as well, and the Axe FX2 and a Mesa Boogie Studio preamp, and that's maxed out my inputs. So what I need to do is I'll do another live stream, another time where we do a little kind of audio comparison between these two, because it's actually really easy to do. I just need to switch one cable, and I can do that for you. But it's not set up to go now. Um, this thing is mind-blowingly good. Obviously, everyone knows the Ox is amazing, but not quite a few people haven't checked out this shoe bump expander it's phenomenal really really phenomenal so we'll do that another day i promise um thank you mr beebs uh bro can you say something about chord melody yes i can i'm terrible at it truly truly terrible at it it's not my forte at all so i'm not gonna not gonna pretend that i can do that and try and give you answers for things i'm not good at um do you still play fourth fifth tuning yeah fourth tuning i do new toys hope you're doing well justin The handle on the AX8, it comes loose, you can DIY it. Right, that's interesting. Right, now I know what you were talking about when you were talking about screwing. I took the side panel and the top panel off the AX8, and there was absolutely no way to get a screwdriver in there. So I don't know how you would do that. You'd have to take the PCBs out. So I don't know how... I haven't spoken to um, good friends with Matt Picone from from Fractal Audio, I maybe should speak to him and see. I'm not actually that worried about the handle not being there because it still functions perfectly fine. Uh, it just means it's slightly less convenient to pick up, but I don't want to travel with it that way because it's already got a little bit damaged just because it gets thrown around in suitcases and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why, but that's interesting. I, if you know of anybody who's fixed that, I would be interested to know, guys. That would be very interesting. It's a pretty easy fix. Right, Nick Burby, Nick Burby, um, if anybody's got any links to, or maybe I could just Google it. I'll just Google it, guys. Otherwise, someone's going to send me one of those links where you click on it and it types it into Google for you. Uh, I Googled that for you. Uh, Bill Evans comes in on the car all the time when the melody to the boy next door comes in and kills me. Yeah, man, Bill Evans, some of the, um, like the tune Lorry and the tune Very Early, some of my favourite tunes in the whole of the jazz kind of canon stroke repertoire genre, whatever, just unbelievable. And I think very early Bill Evans wrote when he was a student as well, just blows my mind. Um, okay, Jason Wade, stick a germanium fuzz model in front of the brown eye baby. I, I, uh, I tried that earlier. Don't think it works quite the same. I think you need the physical circuit in front of an amplifier to make that work. Although I obviously did try it. Um, Jason Way, I really like the EVH Wolfgang neck, but your signature model has intrigued me since release. How would you compare the neck profile of yours to that? Now, I believe, I could be wrong, um, so you can disregard everything I'm about to say if I am wrong, that the EVH Wolfgang doesn't have a symmetrical neck. I think it's got um, slightly, uh, I think it's larger at the top than it is at the bottom. I might, might be thinking of the um, Music Man Luke. This neck is... Um, Probably a little bit fatter, but it's got a, a, a C-shaped profile. It's not flat on the back, um, but it is the finish on it. The satin finish is supremely smooth. This is it's funny actually. I've got 24 guitars, of which about 90% are in this room. If I could turn the camera around, I would show you. But there's a ton of guitars in here, and when I play the other guitars, I always think, oh yeah, these have got nice necks. And then when I come back to the AZs, it doesn't matter which one it is. It could be the TQM1. There's a gold top over there. I could grab that in a second if you want, guys. There's another TQM1 over there, which I'm experimenting with some different pickups in because I'm doing um, a custom LA custom guitar, LA custom shop guitar. And um, I'm experimenting with some different pickups, uh, which was another reason why I bought this guitar because it's got some different pickups in. Uh, or just the, the, the two humbucker AZs. Whenever I go back to those guitars, the necks always blow me away. They, it is one of the best necks I've ever tried in the business that's not on a boutique handmade guitar, as in you've waited seven months for it. It's just a, an off-the-shelf guitar. It's staggering, absolutely staggering. The only other ones that ever come close for me are the Music Man necks because I think they've got something special as well. They're very, very nice indeed. But I'd rather play an Ibanez for obvious reasons. 
Um, any new music being released soon? Love the Elba Triangle. I am slowly working on my album, guys, I promise. Um, how do you mix melody and harmony into your technique in your guitar playing? Well, harmony happens by default. You can't not have the harmony in there because you're playing over certain harmonic structures. Let's say I had a B-flat Lydian chord, by which I mean the mode that you would play over this would be B-flat Lydian. The name of the chord is B-flat major 7 sharp 11. Well, the harmony that I need to project over that, if you like, could be two things. You could play B-flat Lydian, or this is ambiguous enough, ambiguous enough to play B-flat Lydian augmented. So you could do all, either of those things. So the harmony is there already. Now within that harmony, there are certain things that you can uh, make use of that will outline certain sounds. And you can make those into technique things. So for instance, I know that if I want to outline the Lydian augmented, actually let's not do the Lydian augmented, let's do the Lydian. I can play a C major triad. Now I can make that into technical exercises so I could practice my C major. And I could come up with technical things that would work around that C major triad. Um, if I wanted to do the same thing for a Lydian augmented, I could do a D major triad. I could use C and D and I could come up with exercises like, I do this a lot. So you can utilize a particular harmonic idea and come up with a technical exercise after the fact that will, that will find or, or help you to find ways to express that harmonic idea. Now, as far as melody, you don't necessarily have to have melody and technique exclusive of one another. They can be one and the same, but really that's down to your ears and down to your taste and down to your experience as a guitar player. Um, and also what you're playing over. Sometimes playing a melody is not, or having melodic structures is not, is not the way forward. Sometimes it is just raw speed and playing scales that, that works well, or sweeping arpeggios, for instance. Um, but I try to listen to what I'm playing all the time. I'm not a guy that can sing every note that I play, but I try and listen to everything I'm playing and have an awareness of what's going on and try and play melodies um, and target certain sounds as well as I'm playing, uh, if I'm playing with a particular technique. But really, um, melody and technique, unless you've got good technique, your melodies won't sound good. So, uh, you know, you need good technique to execute those melodies well. It's kind of a vague answer. It's difficult on a live stream to come up with something really, really kind of profound. Um, Let's see. But do I play authentic? No. No, I do not. <laughs> that video was crazy. Uh, okay. Jake Wilson's album. Yep, yeah, can't wait for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, Preston Smith to get clean really quick with the volume and tone control. Uh, well, the volume control. Yeah, that's great. I used to... Um, have on some of my Sir guitars. You guys will have seen the blower switch. That was a cool invention because you could set, um, might be something I think about in the future with, with Ibanez, but um, you can set the pickup to combination and volume and tone controls to whatever you want. I know BB's got one on his guitar, his Fibonari. So you could go, you could get your clean sound again if I go to here and set to three, for instance. And if you quickly need to go to a hard rhythm sound or if you need a lead sound, you flick the blower switch down and it hardwires the bridge humbucker or whatever bridge pickup you've got straight to the output. And it does actually change the tone as well, which is super interesting. Um, uh, there's new Ibanez series look incredible, but I've seen a lot of guitarists playing them and I've been really intrigued by them. Are they available for selling right now? Yes, they are, absolutely. They've been available for well over a year now. Um, Okay. Oh, you guys talking about the Germanian thing that, that Pete did. Check out Pete Thorne's video that he put up today. It's amazing. Uh, I'm good, thank you, Arjeet. I hope you're good, Arjeet. Um, what else have we got here? How's the stain on the Sabre? It's good. It's good. I wouldn't say it's quite as good as this guitar, but it's very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Um, the woods they've used on these are very high quality. Um, they're not sort of super thin finishes or anything, but there's, it's a satin neck. Um, it's really good solid construction with the bolt on neck, so you get good sustain. You, you, they're, they're very nice guitars indeed. I'm a big fan. It doesn't quite resonate in the sort of a live way that this guitar does, but you know, it's a different price point as well. It's an Indonesian made one. 
um, but with super high-end hardware. This has got stainless steel frets, Goto locking tuners, Dimasio pickups, um, super high-end bridge on here as well. So um, yeah, neat little thing you can do as well. Actually, I don't know if you can do it with this particular guitar uh, bar. I'll just see if you can. There, there is a thing you can actually switch. I don't think you can do it on this particular trem. Let me just check. You might be able to. You can actually put, whoops, oh dear. Yeah, you can. So if you like the black trem arm look, you can actually take the trem arm off a zero, an edge zero trem, just take the silver mount off and you can put it on the, a the AZ guitars. <laughs> Got a little bit more given it than the silver one. But a nice feature if you've got some of these kicking around that you you not that you don't use, but that you, you would want to use on the AZ guitar because it's black if you like that look. That's quite a nice neat little feature that Ibanez have implemented. Which is kind of cool. First time I've done that actually. Um, please play that guitar over a backing track. Uh, I have not set up to, this is where you find I've broken my own guitar. Um, what did I do with that whammy bar? I genuinely don't know, there it is. Um, I've not set up yet, I will do, but I've not set up to play backing tracks through this setup. Uh, I have for the Dawson, when I do the Dawson YouTube live streams, I've got all that set up. I've only just got the setup done here with an Elgato capture card, and I haven't set up the audio for that yet. So I will, I will do live streams where I play other stuff, both my stuff and other stuff as well, so. Um, okay, um, some love for BB, which is always good. Oh, what have I missed? Yes, I am getting slimmer. I've lost uh, about seven pounds in the UK. I don't know what that is in kilograms uh, and grams. Who knows? But yes, I am getting thinner. I am indeed. Kids, they make you fat. So yeah, I've been uh, eating much better. Thank you very much. Ah, I see we have uh, some donations. This is very nice of you guys, thank you. I'm sorry I missed those guys, let me see. Um, so, Tristi Tristian, uh, what are two or three, thank you so much for the five dollars, dude. What are the two or three things that you would have done differently better if you relearned guitar from scratch with the knowledge you have now? And I'm sorry I missed that initially. It's not showing up immediately. It's, it's kind of delayed for some reason. Um, Right, that is a seriously good question. And uh, Ma B, thank you very much for the five, uh, five euros, dude. That's absolutely very, very kind of you. Probably don't deserve it, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks for the tip on the knobs, no problem. So Tristian, um, I, when I first started playing guitar in 1995, between the 1995 to 1998, I did a huge amount of work on technique but I practiced it very badly and I was really into my right hand, um, which is not something I'm known for now. And the reason for that is I didn't, I wish Troy Grady had been around at that point um, because I don't have any downward pick slanting in my playing. I do have upward pick slanting, but when I do this kind of stuff, I always found that I could do the John Petrucci exercise from Rock Discipline that was like the I can't do it today, but if I start with an upstroke, I can do that. If I start with a downstroke, I can't, and that's because I don't downward pick slant. And it's become so ingrained in my playing now after so many years of playing, over 20 years of playing, that much to my frustration, I cannot fix it now. I have been trying a lot more recently to try and fix it by doing some downward pick slanting. But the problem is, it's not as simple as just switching that downward pick slanting on and hoping for the best. And if you don't know what downward pick slanting is, go and check out Troy Grady's stuff. It's amazing. And it absolutely works. Um, I'm not going to go through the concept now, but I've been trying to practice to get more of this rotation with the, the head of the pick downward slanted. <laughs> The interesting thing actually is one of the reasons why I bought the capture card is so that I can film myself, I can look at myself on this screen here, I have three screens going on, I have one over here, the big one behind me, and then this one for doing live streams where I can see all the chat and stuff and 
This one I use to check whether my right hand is looking the way it should look when I've seen other people play. Because I always see it from this angle, never from the front. And it just means I can do it in real time. Uh, so yeah, that, that's one of the things that I really regret and wish that I had uh, known how to work on. I wish I'd had a teacher because I didn't have any teachers for the first three years. And that's when I did most of my technique work. So unfortunately, it's left me with some problems. And then later on down the line, um, my legato is way better because I practiced that later in life and knew how to practice properly. So I didn't rush and didn't try and speed up too much. So yeah, the, the other thing, if, if I do two of these, the other thing is I wish I'd gone through more of a kind of blues phase where I developed some more of that repertoire. I have none of it in my playing at all. And this tuning doesn't help either. Um, I would never go back on the tuning. That's, that's one thing that I would never say. I would always want this tuning because I think it's an integral part of who I am as a guitarist. Um, but yeah, I don't have any proper blues vocabulary in my playing. And when I listen to guys, like I watched that pedal show today and just listening to Mick did a, if you guys check out the vlog he did today, and he's got a um, Gretsch Streamliner, I think it's called. And he's it's just unplugged and he just plays just this throwaway phrase and Mick would kill me for saying this because uh, I don't think Mick, Mick's very British in that uh, compliments make people blush over here, but he sounded phenomenal just on those that single phrase. It just blows my mind that people can sound that amazing just by playing simple phrases and I don't have that in my playing. I'm more of a kind of technique harmony guy, so I wish I had that, um, I really do. So that, that's a really good question. And th again, thank you for the tip. Um, when are you coming to Guitar Sanctuary? <laughs> I wish. Uh, Marco, let me just check I've not missed anything else. In... Yeah, no, that's fine, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna have to go fairly soon, guys, within the next five minutes, I'm afraid. Um, so, thanks for your answer before, Tom. Have you ever approached classical pieces like 16th Caprices? I only know one guy in the world that managed to do it at the full speed. I have, uh, not the Caprices, but I've done all the Bach violin sonatas and petitas, um, and I use them for reading and technique practice. The cello suites are really nice as well. Um, so I've practiced, not practiced, I, I've never learned them. Um, they are kicking around here somewhere. I'm not sure where. The book is somewhere around here. And I use them just for reading practice and I like it because reading music is a very different thing to, to playing or improvising in the standard way that I do because this beautiful sound comes out and all you're doing is really just experiencing it when you read it, as long as your reading is good enough. So um, that's, that's one of the things that I do with it. Um, uh, sexy lighting, good. I like, we, we can do all sorts of color changes. Uh, we can, if you'd like red, we can do red or green or blue. What were we on? I can't remember. We may be on blue, we'll leave it on blue. Um, or pink, let's leave it on pink. Um, yeah, so what, uh, what's your favorite non-guitar music? Pop the boards out and the screws are right there. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite non-guitar music to listen to? Um, oh man, there's, there's quite a lot. Um, I really like, that probably doesn't count as, as non-guitar music, the Punch Brothers. Um, there's a lot of classical music that I like as well. I'm a big Ravel fan, um, big Sibelius fan. Um, I love lots of piano players. Big Keith Jarrett, big Bill Evans fan, mentioned those before. Um, I also like, I've been getting into, I borrowed this actually, this was left in my video studio, I've been getting into synths. I'm a big fan of analog synths. Um, a big fan of, of any kind of very dirty synth kind of stuff. A big fan of a lot of prog stuff that's not necessarily too guitar based as well. Um, but these days, the amount of time I get to listen to music is very limited. Um, are we getting an Axe 3 review? Yes, uh, I've already shot it. It'll be going up on my YouTube channel and it will be going up on Guitar Interactive as well. So you can read the review and check it out on my YouTube channel and on their YouTube channel as well and in the magazine. Um, Simmons, how you doing Simmons? Hope you're good. Uh, the guitar tuning, Chris, if you're still watching, is E, A, D, G, C, F instead of B and E. And it gives me this symmetrical shape. So a shape that I might play here. Oh, sorry. Is the same everywhere. 
makes the guitar much more symmetrical. Um, I'm glad you like the video, NJ. What do you think about the Fractal FM3 and the fact that you discontinued the AXA? Well, I'll be getting an FM3 for sure. Uh, I think it's a fantastic thing. Uh, it's a really nice size, super powerful. S you know, it sounds amazing, so I'm looking forward to it. I think any company, when they innovate with a new product, it makes sense for them to have a small period where they sell the previous generation and then just to discontinue it. I don't have a problem with that at all. Not at all, as long as they still support it to some extent over the coming months, and that's fine, which I'm sure they will knowing Fractical Audio. Um, Percentage-wise, how much have you improved in the last five years? Interesting question, Acoustics. Um, in some things, massively. In other things, I've definitely gone backwards. One of the reasons why this is an interesting period for me as far as guitar goes is because I have a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter now. And I've been doing a lot of video work. We've just bought a house and um, I've just bought an Audi A4. Um, so there's a lot of bills going out every month. Um, my partner works two days a week because she's looking after our daughter a lot. So I'm paying for a lot of things. So I have to be very consistent with my income. And the Ibanez touring has been really great for that as the signature guitar stuff. Um, but I've been doing a lot of video work and that has left me with less time to, to work on my own stuff and to practice. So certain elements have become slightly like, you know, I would need to level them up again. Um, but other elements have become better. So I wouldn't say overall as a player, I've got massively better in any one area, but I feel much like, you know, I've done so much live playing over the past year and a half um, in terms of clinics and masterclasses and gigs with Martin Miller. Um, and doing my own clinic tours for Laney as well. That is, you know, that side of things is is interesting, but and, and improved a lot. But you know, it's a balancing act when you've got kids. Um, okay, I can probably do a couple more questions, guys. So let me scroll down a little bit. Where are we? Uh, Mar B, thank you very much for the one euro. That's very kind indeed. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, guys, if you, I'll, I'll say this because every other you, you know person on YouTube says it. If you do want to support me. Um, I'm going to do a lot more live streams, at least one a week. Um, if you do want to support me, you can click the uh, donation button below, but I absolutely do not need it. So don't feel obliged at all, guys. Um, and there is a, a top chat function on there as well. So if you want to get your chat featured on there, so I can actually definitely answer your question because there's a lot of chat coming in. Um, feel free to uh, put, put that down there as well. Um, any plans on doing a European tour clinic again? Uh, I don't actually know, Jose. Um, yes, I would love to, but it, it depends because Martin and I are going to be going to China again um, in August and I'm in Spain in August as well. Um, probably going to be in Germany in um, September, I think. Other than that, not too much future on the cards just at the moment because I'm doing so much video work at the moment. We'll see if that kind of calms down a little bit, but... Um, it's very useful for me at the moment, I must admit. Um, yeah, the quail leg is two and a half. Crazy, eh? Absolutely crazy. Uh, do I have Bill Evans playing a lot in the car? Oh, you, you have Bill Evans playing a lot in the car. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, try the tuning, Rich. It's awesome. Uh, hi there, Fall Rock. Um, time remembered is amazing, BB. Very true. I'm doing these questions in reverse order. Uh, Ha! You've been in the synth rabbit hole. Awesome. Red or brown sauce on your bacon butty? Well, I'm not eating bacon butties at the moment unless they've got all the fat removed, which is very boring. I'm not eating bread either. Um, but it would have to be brown sauce on a bacon butty every time. I haven't heard Play's new album. I'll check it out. RGB Quail. Uh, okay, Rich. I managed to connect, correct my... Deep, oh, okay, 39. Right, yeah, that is actually my plan, Rich, is to exaggerate the movement by doing this with the pick making that diagonal angle for the downward pick slanting. Because when I see other people do it, that's what it looks like to me. So that the pick, basically, when you do the... When you do the upstroke, it comes away from the string so that you can bring it over the next string and down onto the... Uh, to, to do the downstroke. My problem is at the moment, as I say, if I do that with an upstroke, 
I can do that with, we, as we say in the UK, till the cows come home. If I do it with a downstroke, I, I just can't. I can't do it. it. My hand just refuses to do it at any kind of speed. However, for the first time ever, having practiced it that way with a camera, I can feel that there is a difference. Um, but this will always be me. I'm the legato guy, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's going to be interesting to practice. And I'm glad to hear that you've had some, in, you know, some, some progress with it, if you like. Um, oh, there we go, Preston as well. So you, you've relearned how to do it as well. It's very interesting. Oh man, Miris Varajek is amazing. A lovely man as well. A very, very nice guy. I, I know Miris. Um, all right, guys. So I'm going to have to go. Hi, Stacy. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what I'm using, guys, if you want to know about this stream. Um, I'm using a, a Sony A7 III which is just hooked up via uh, HDMI to an Elgato HD60S. Um, I do have an HD60 Pro, and I also have an HD60 as well. This one is not so useful because this has significant lag on it because it's USB 2. But the HD60S is great because it's USB 3, so there's very little lag. There's about 200 milliseconds of lag. The HD60 Pro has no lag at all, and that's, but that's an internal PCI Express uh, 3 capture card. So that's a little bit different. It's got a higher bit rate as well. I think it goes up to 80 megabits per second, whereas the HD60S is about 40 megabits per second. But you can see it looks good. Um, but the, the A7 III is an incredible camera. Absolutely incredible. Um, so there we go. All right, guys. So I'm going to have to go because I have to drop my daughter's friend back, back at her house. She's round at our place at the moment. But I will be doing one of these a week. I love, love doing live streams. I think they're awesome. Um, so I'm glad it worked. Um, maybe Wednesday evenings might be good for me. We'll see. But there'll be one next week as well. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for those donations, guys, as well. I really, really appreciate that. As I say, it's never expected. But that's very, very kind of you guys indeed. Any support is very much appreciated. So I'm going to drop... Um, my daughter's friend off at home and then I'm going to play some Division 2 because I've just got that and I'm getting into it and I've got this amazing for any of the geeks out there 1000 nit monitor behind me so it's stupidly bright HDR monitor so I'm going to sit there and burn my retinas playing the Division 2 because I've played enough guitar today all right guys thank you so much and I will see you all very very soon I really appreciate you guys watching thank you so much uh, let me end the stream Oh, where's my mouse gone? I want to end the stream, but my mouse is not cooperating. Right, guys, see you later. Thank you. Cheers.